Let's take a look at a 3D printing pen that is powered from a USB power supply. It states 2 amp, but in reality the unit only seems to draw about 1.5 amp, but still does a fairly decent job of melting plastic. I shall demonstrate this, and then we'll take it apart and see what's inside. So to start off with, this LCD display displays either PLA or... I don't even know if you can see that. Let's zoom down in this. This might be the best bet. Can you see that? Very, very sharp PLA, or press a button, ABS. So we're going to choose PLA. To start the heating, you press the advance button, and this red LED here lights up. And the display, well, let's show you, starts showing the temperature going up. Useful components in this, I should think. Uh, let's zoom back out. Once the temperature's up, the red LED will change to green. Now, this thing came with uh, some red 1.75mm filament, some green, and some clear. I've only used the clear because it's, quite frankly, the most fun. How's this doing? It's got a while to go yet. But uh, things I've been playing about with, uh, because it doesn't really stick that well to glass, you can actually extrude it onto glass and shapes. And this reminds me of those Christmas frames you get that will have lights inside, that someone in a factory obviously has something like this but on a larger scale and they just spend their whole day drawing plastic around these metal frames. But this, when you put it on, can come off and it creates little uh, optical structures that could have a good lensing effect. That is probably about the only possible reason I could think of this. It has gone green. Okay. Uh, here is the filament. You make sure the end is cut flat. And then you press the advance button here and it starts winding it in. There is a slider here that changes the speed, and if you push it forward, it slows it down. If you pull it back, it speeds it up. I thought it was going to be a different direction. And it warns you that uh, if it's uh, if the motor's struggling, you can increase the temperature by clicking that button. If it's uh, spitting out too many bubbles, you can lower the temperature and just get the fine-tuned thing. So here it is uh, extruding plastic now. And... Um, Yes, you basically just extrude plastic over things. Let me bring that thing back in again, that bulb. You can stop it by pressing this button again and start it again by pressing the button again. This button here is only used for removing the filament. So say, for instance, uh, you can just basically run the filament around this uh, and to your heart's content. It shows lots of things you can build, but really, fundamentally, compared to a 3D printer, it is somewhat lacking. Anyway, right, let's press stop. And let's eject the filament by pressing the back button. And it is now winding the filament out the back. Um, and once it's wound it out for a specific length of time, it's notable there's quite strong teeth marks in this from the, the cog that is forcing it through. Once it's wound it out, and it's popped clear after a slight delay, it will shut off. And there's the, the plastic just gooing out the end. And that is it. OK. So let's unplug it and uh, take it apart. Now, I do notice that this end looks as though it might pop out. I haven't tried this yet because Murphy's Law says it would break if I tried this. So let's try popping it out now. Is this for routine replacement of bits. I'm not really sure. So let's... Uh, oh, that is quite tricky to get out. This would have left screwdriver prints all over it. What happens when it's removed? Oh, right, OK. Oh, there is the heater assembly with its feedback. So maybe you can change that. Does this just plug in? Is it hot? Yes. Am I going to burn myself? Possibly. Oh, that is very hot. Yes. Not really surprising. It does warn against small children burning themselves. Maybe, uh, I, I don't know, not sure how that comes out. Anyway, there is a screw here. I think we should take that screw out. So here is a screwdriver, and we'll take the screw out. And is this going to reveal everything? It's very good. The whole panel has come off here, revealing the circuit board, going from one end to the other with the... Oh, the slider is actually just multiple sections. It's not a potentiometer. It is just... A, right, okay, so what now? Does this come out? 
Oh, the back is going to unclip, isn't it? I think we may have to get the spudger into the back. Where is the spudger? Where's that clipped in? Is it clipped in here? It does mention changing the motherboard and in instructions, but it doesn't look that straightforward. Uh, hmm. Tricky. I don't know if this does clip in. If nothing really major happens, I shall just, uh, I shall pause the video until I've got it out and then uh, take a picture of the circuit board and we can analyse the circuitry. Yeah, that is not coming out very easily. Let's use brute force. Oh, I see. That's promising. Oh, yeah, that's out. Did that make a huge loud click? Sorry about that. Uh, what about now? Is it going to come out? The motor assembly. There's a little jack. The motor assembly, is it going to lift out? Yes. And there's a little connector. And it comes this little Bowden tube. The connector has, in true fashion, pulled the entire assembly off instead of just unplugging in a neat manner. Okay, let's try putting that back on and taking it off in a more controlled manner. Better still, I'll take the circuit board out and then we can explore it in a more detailed picture. One moment, please. Reverse engineering is complete. Let's explore and we'll start with the bit you're most interested in, which is the extruder and the heater. So we have a ceramic nozzle here. And what they've done, it's got four terminals on it, and it does just unplug from the circuit board. The circuit board has these round tubes uh, soldered onto it, and they go into a housing, this housing here, and then this plugs into that, and it couples into the Bowden tube bit for feeding the filament in. But anyway, the four connections, the two outer ones, go to the heat element. The heat element is, consists of the connection wires which are basically just looped around each end and twisted together along with the heat element wire and then the heat element wires are actually spiralled round same at the other end with a little returning wire uh, I'll zoom down this with a little return wire here on the back which appears to have come off oh no that's the thermistor this is the return wire here with a bit of sleeving and uh, then it's covered in a sort of like a, a cement thermal cement there is a bead thermistor with a, uh, at room temperature, it was 125,000 ohms. And uh, that's connected to two middle contacts. So this is initially wrapped with uh, a piece of this fiberglass, braided fiberglass tape around here. And then there's an outer heat shrink sleeve put over that just to snug everything together. Very simple, but actually fairly proficient. Not that bad. Where's the bit of heat shrink? There's a bit of heat shrink. Not that it's terribly exciting. So that is the heat element. Uh, let's take a look at the next bit you're most interested in, possibly, which is the motor drive. That pinches the filament and pushes it through. Let's put it up this way. So here it is. When you take this little cover plate off, this little cover plate here, which clips on, you can see there is a little brass uh, bearing. It's just purely a little spacer here. It's not a ball bearing race or anything like that. Simply a, a rolling pulley. And then opposite is this metal uh, toothed cog, which when it's put through, it bites onto the filament at just the right position. So if I push this in, it's not going to go through, but but the little brass, the spacer will pop off, which it does all the time. But once that's rotating, it will grip it and it will pull it through and feed it through the system. Uh, the motor itself has a worm drive onto a pulley in here, cog wheel in here, which then comes through here, is geared onto this one, which gears down onto this one, which gears down onto this one, which gears down onto this one, and makes sure that pulley rotates at a very low speed. And that's... More or less the drive mechanism. Let's take a look at the circuit board now. I'll, I'll warn in advance, there's not going to be a schematic for this because I'll show you what's happening in the circuit board and you'll suddenly realise why there's not going to be a schematic because they have economised. And as a result of that, drawing the schematic would be, quite frankly, arduous. But it's fine. I can talk you through all the modules. 
The supply comes on here, on these contacts, and the 5 volts from the USB supply goes straight over, the positive goes out to the heating element, and the negative is switched via this MOSFET here, which has the classic pull-down resistor, and then it's switched by the output of the chip. The thermistor uh, forms a potential divider, with resistors over here, there's a reason they put all the resistors over here. It's because everything's multiplexed uh, because of the way they've run this display. But there is a pull-up resistor and then there's the thermistor input uh, and that monitors the temperature. Now, I was hoping, I was hoping this was going to be usable for other things. I was hoping that, you know, this would have provided direct temperature of what was happening at the tip. But no, it's cheating it's cheating in so many ways. I'll show you that after, right? I'll show you why it's cheating and it makes it completely useless for our applications. Or maybe it doesn't. Maybe it makes it useful for our applications. It does what many of the cheap Chinese solder stations do. And to avoid the display jittering about between the readings, it only goes up to your desired temperature and then just miraculously holds that temperature despite what's happening behind the scenes. Um, the speed control select is a just three position switch feeding to three resistors which form a potential divider and provide an analog voltage in. The reason is because they're having to multiplex things and cram an awful lot into just a few pins in this chip because most of them are actually taken up by this LCD display. The chip is a microcontroller. I presume it's dedicated for driving LCDs, but you can drive them directly from some microcontrollers. The main thing is with LCDs is you have to alternate the polarity all the time. And there are three digit drives and there are seven segment drives giving a total of 10 pins. No decimal points or anything, just purely three digits with seven segment drive. That uses up 10 pins. Here's a microcontroller. There's the two power pins. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. How many do we have left? Four. Four pins for everything else. So the analog input from the temperature sensor probably goes to its own dedicated pin. Oh, that's see, that's why you're not getting a schematic, because uh, I think maybe that's multiplexed as well. There's a very good chance it is, because it has to drive one, two, three LEDs, and it also has to drive this... Uh, not just this MOSFET, but it's got two outputs needed for driving the H-bridge driver. They've, they've, they've skimped on pins, and it just makes it... And also, these are tiny, the tiniest resistors they could get, which means that putting probes on them and trying to probe around is an absolute nightmare. It would take a long time to reverse this. It would be reverse engineers completely and draw a schematic. It would be a fruitless exercise. It would be very... It would be interesting in a way, but it would be also be demoralizing. <laughs> it would just be arduous. This other thing that looks like a transistor here is a voltage regulator. Takes the 5 volts in, gives a nice stable 3 volts out, so that when the motor's churning away and the heater's on and the voltage drops, the processor at least gets a nice stable voltage. The H-bridge driver here is for the motor, and it has the plus 5 volts and 0 volts going to it. It has the two motor outputs, and it's got a capacitor across them for noise and filtering reasons. And it's got two input pins. And the arrangement with these little H-bridge drivers is you've got two input pins that can be high or low. Either it can be high or low. And if they're both high, it won't rotate. If I remember correctly, if one's low, it will rotate one direction. If the other's low, it will rotate another direction. If they're both low, it won't, rot won't rotate. It's just a very standard little transistor package in there, I presume. Um... And beyond all the multiplexing mess to drive LEDs and buttons and also read inputs, uh, that is more or less it. So power in, regulator, 3 volts to the microcontroller, um, microcontroller sending signals to the H-bridge driver gets 5 volts, which then drives the motor. Um, the switch input for the speed, which just gives an analog voltage over uh, the MOSFET for driving the heater, which is coincidentally a 2302, that is a SI2302. Very standard. Lots of companies making 2302 MOSFETs. Cable is switching about 2.4 amps at 20 volts, which makes it perfect for this. Uh, right, okay, let's let's cut to the, the cheating that they've done. And my cheating of not drawing you a full schematic because it was arduous.
when they multiplex analog and digital inputs like that, it does not make life easy. Anyway, so here's the PLA setting. Let's zoom down this. And we'll focus on the display. There we go. So it says PLA. That's most reassuring that it's PLA. Right, let's pull this cover off. And let's tell it, OK, start the thing. And it, immediately it says with an open sensor, it says it's 20 degrees Celsius. Obviously it's not. It should have detected the sensor was open. That it was ridiculously high resistance, but it didn't do it. Now watch this. I'm going to short out the sensor completely. And you watch the display and it goes... The temperature is rising. Oh, it's up to 35 degrees. Oh, it's climbing. It's going up to 40 degrees. And if you take it off, it stops. And if you keep keep it on, it's going up again. So it will be responding to temperature. But it's gradually incrementing the display with delay, just so it looks sensible as it's climbing up towards the temperature. And if I leave it on long enough and it gets to 190 degrees Celsius, uh, which it's not really, uh, incident that means that if the temperature sensor gets broken and fails, it will just leave the heater on and you'll end up with very, very sticky filament coming out the end. Mmm, sticky filament. Uh, so it's up to a uh, perceived 130, 140 degrees. It's heading there, it's getting there, it's very close to the point that it's going to change from the red LED to show it's heating to the green LED to show it's hot and it's doing that. Now, pow, oh, we're all ready to go. Right, okay, that's it, open circuit now. So it's not reading that thing real time at all. So then you increase the temperature. Say we go, let's go up to about uh, 200. And then it goes back, but when you go like this, it goes. It then goes, oh, that's the new target level to reach. And it goes up to 200, won't go any higher. Oh, hold on, a lie. For, let's see what it goes up to. 210. Okay, let's go up to 210 then. Ooh, spicy hot. Now what happens if I go down the way? One, two, three, four, five. It responds instantly going... No, it just dropped back. Oh no, it's not going to go down? What if I short it out again? Oh, I short it out and it starts going down because it is looking for the thermistor again. So I'm not really sure what you could do with that. I mean, it is controlling the MOSFET for the heat. But what you're getting is, shall we say, a, a massaged response to the temperature sensing. If anything, the circuitry in here is just a bit over-optimized to the point that it, it spoils its usefulness for other things. But having said that, it does what it is very well. It seems to melt the filament, it seems to feed it through, everything's there, it'll give you hours of fun drawing plasticky lines until the novelty wears off and then it'll get thrown in the bin at some point. But there we have it, uh, the strangely pointless, um, the strangely uh, pointless indeed uh, 3D printing pen, if, you, if you've got one of these, if you've done anything major with it, let me know. They probably have some actual use that you could use it for something like creating a sort of lensing effect around bulbs. But uh, other than that, I just can't think of another use for it. But uh, that was it. It's an interesting, very much cost-optimized, mass-produced so that something like this could be sold for basically a tenner on eBay. And uh, it was still very interesting to take it apart and see the lovely uh, drive mechanism and the nice custom-made heated and pluggable um, filament melting tip. Very neat.